Hello, Facebook. Right now, I'm joined by Sean Davis from my marketing partners, Get Viral. And uh, he asked me to uh, participate in this live interview on the New York City market. What's up, Sean? Hey, David. Thanks for having me today. Uh, so like you said, we're going to talk about the New York market today. Uh, and the first question that I have for you is, uh, what type of properties in the city are hot right now? And uh, what would you say is driving that? The hottest properties are the ones without air conditioning, Sean. They, they get <laughs> steamy and then they smell bad. They're very hot. If you want air conditioning, then uh, no, I understand the question. And the uh, year over year data shows us that um, 25 percent less properties are selling in 2018 than sold in 2017. Um, in addition to that, the average property is selling for 9% less than the original asking price. So what is selling? Properties that are in excellent condition or provide great value. So what we're seeing is our median price point, you know, we'll get more into the numbers, but is there's sort of a few different stratospheres. There's the over 4 million market and then there's the under. So the over 4 million market has been pretty soft in general for a long time, but in, you know, the, the more human mortal market under 4 million, the sub market is under 1 million is selling with, uh, with traction over a million. You're seeing lots of price reductions and even greater discounts. Okay. Awesome. So on the flip side of that, maybe what are some homes that you would say aren't so hot, they're not selling. And what do you think is the driving force behind that? The, the market for renovators has really condensed and, and shrunk. Um, also, uh, properties that are obsolete. And obsolete can mean a lot of things. Tommy Hilfiger is selling his penthouse at the Plaza Hotel. It's been on the market for all sorts of prices, $59 million, $55 million. I don't know where it is today, maybe $47 million. But, you know, these types of huge prices, this is a very rare group of buyers for them, and they have a lot of options. Okay. Awesome. So you kind of touched on price a little bit, um, but specifically, you know, what is the median prices in some of the neighborhoods that you've been working in and what do you think is driving the prices? So I have this uh, chart here. And uh, if you want to see a copy of that, we can email it to you. Douglas Elliman publishes these charts monthly. Um, the median sales price uh, in Manhattan is uh, one million seventy seven thousand five hundred. And a year ago, to put that in perspective, it was 1060000 So $1 million, one, one, that's been the middle of the market for years. That is where a lot of New Yorkers can afford to buy. Um, and that really is a product of income. You know, a lot of people make enough money to mortgage $800,000, $700,000 and live in New York. And, and a lot less people make more than that. Now, I sold the place this year for $8.1 There are people out there who can do it, but it's a smaller market. Okay. So if somebody's looking to break into the market for the first time, uh, where would you recommend that they start? You know, the way you should start, I, I put together a bunch of tips. The first tip is mindset. You have to want to do this. If what you want in life is to play video games and eat Godfather heroes, that's what you're going to do. If what you want in life is to play pool or darts or whatever, that's what you're going to do. And what you want is to get married, have kids and buy a house. That's what you're going to do. So even if you don't want to get married or have kids, you might still want to buy a house. And there are a few tricks. The, one of the main ways we waste money is uh, going out to eat. So once you're committed to saving money, you should save money by, you know, monitoring your travel habits, your, your eating habits. But let's say you're on that path. You know, quite simply, you just talk to someone like me. You figure out how much money you got. You figure out where you want to live and what it's going to cost you. And you got to make a plan. Now, let's say you're further along the road and you've got, you know, the down payment saved. Well, you talk to your real estate professional and then you're going to talk to a lender. We've got about six to seven that we recommend. We work closely with Citizens Bank. So what you want to do is put yourself in a position for success by, um, by planning your future with, you know, a financial planner, real estate broker, mortgage banker. Okay. So the last question that I have for you is, uh, is for sellers. Uh, if someone's looking to find the, the value of their home right now, uh, how would you recommend that they go about doing that? 
I actually own a website called homevalue.nyc. That's homevalue.nyc. And if you plug in your address, 75% of the time we'll kick you out a number, but 100% of the time we will contact you because it's going to ask you for your phone number and email address. We're going to send you a supplemental report, which is what we give to appraisers when you know banks like Citibank, Wells Fargo, Chase hires those professionals. They go to the property. We give them these reports and say, this is what we were looking at when pricing the property. This was our traffic, and that's what they use to make their report, which is what is what's used to underwrite loans in America. Great. Well, this has been a lot of great information, David. Uh, if, if someone wanted to contact you for any reason to learn more about this, uh, how could they do that? Uh, through the Facebook page, um, you could just uh, send us a, a message and contact us. Or uh, my phone number is, if you've, if you've tuned in this long, it's 212-965-6051. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, it's The David Rosen on YouTube. But most of all, um, you know, if you just contact us through Facebook, it will light up my phone and I will say hi. <laughs>